Nothing has changed, just our attitude towards it. Um, because even from like an outsider perspective, you've seen all the interviews, the women have been complaining about the same thing since we started music way back in Abirwanana's time. Like we've had the same problems. <laughs> That's really helping the world in terms of happiness and everything. A lot of big milestones happen in and around rhythm, music. And to us as Ghanaians or Africans, it's everything about us is rhythm. We express our emotions through music, it's it's part and parcel of, it's like our fabric. Our history is actually oral. A bulk part of our history is oral, and we had to find a rhythm or a way to weave it together. And the best way is actually to put it in, put, to put it in a recital. <laughs> My name is Chris Conner. Currently, I'm the team lead for Shatawale. Uh, would I say the biggest Ghanaian musician at the moment? That Ghanaian music has gone through phases. It's also gone through a journey. Back in the day when we had our forefathers who would sit around to have their drinks, chat, and created their home music, which was then called Pamwai music. Then you moved into the space where we have high life, which was a bit more organized, which was more calculated and making sure there's a, there's, a, there's a body of work that represents what our story was to be told. Then you have the exodus or when our people had to start traveling to the rest of the world, Germany, Hamburg, specifically where you have the Boga High Life, where people are becoming more sophisticated. Cultures are engaging. People are getting used to the, sound, the, the, the kind of sound and music out there. There's a bit of fusion. Then a young gentleman who's been out of Ghana, came back to Ghana, used hip hop bits. Basically, the only difference was the fact that he was not rapping or singing in English, but now the local dialect. He brought a different face of the music, hip life, whereby now, a lot of people had gotten into the whole vibe. It was becoming more popular. It was becoming commercialized. Bottom line is what our new crop, that whole Afro beat, Afro fusion, Afro pop is basically, it stems off high life. And that is it. That's, that's our identity. That's our music. That's what sold us to the rest of the world. I started singing when I was like five years. It was in church. It was pretty weird because I was very smallish with a very big voice, you know. Um, but I had very, very supportive parents. Um, I think it became a profession after I did the competition, Stars of the Future. And yeah, um, but I have been doing this as a career, like professionally, for 15 years. I would describe my music as a blend of like sounds, mostly coming from African origin, you know, because I'm an African girl coming from an Ashanti region. And Tree is a very powerful language. I love to like sing in my language. So I would say my music, I'll call it Afro Soul and High Life. 
Um, I've been working as an artist, developing myself for about six years. And um, I definitely have many influences from my sound. But as of now, my current sound that I've managed to fuse together and blend to represent myself is like a fusion uh, of Afrobeats, soul music, R&B, pop, jazz, dance hall, you name it. Chale, chale, more This is Sister Deborah. My fans call me Derby. I love local and foreign bananas. And I dance the banana zoom to Solo Stone Beats. I like to address myself or describe myself as a creative hustler. I'm an artist, I do music, and I've been doing modeling. I never thought or imagined I would become a musician. The only time I actually dreamt, I had an actual dream of being on stage was when I was like four. So I remember being on stage performing on the streets in front of our house. It was a big stage and people were cheering and stuff like that. My brother introduced me to singing because he's a full-time musician. Then I did my first song, Uncle Obama. That was in 2012 when I released that. And that is how I got into doing music. I would say, in general, the type of music I do can fall under pop. However, you could also call it Afropop because I do a lot of my music in Ghana English, Pigeon English. Sometimes I put in a bit of tree, a bit of ga. Um, but aside that, you could describe my music as um, non-conformist, a bit quirky and um, full of satire. It's a stutter, be derby. 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 If you chop, you don't return one more pro. Say, I didn't know you would have meant to enter. Gusto contazo, new from Musetta. The watcher is ready. Come make we chop better. My favorite artist musician is uh, Miss V, Efia, and Wendy Shea. The three of them. I like them very much because. They improve, they improve what, what men can do, women also can do. Because in the olden days, women cannot sing. By now, we are in the, we are in the world of technology world, so everybody can do. Women too are doing their best than men. So what men can do, women also can do better. The place of women in music, it's rather unfortunate we find ourselves in a position where we as a people, we as a music space have not done so well when it comes to empowering and when it comes to giving our women the needed opportunities and the needed push to be able to scale to the next level and create something for them like we do for our men. There's an artist called Abi Wanana and I saw her literally battle her way out with the guys on stages and schools and everything and come out and release an album and actually become an artist and went on to judge one of the reality shows was in Nigeria like literally just I could run my hand through milestones of her development that really made an impact but I've met like some incredible talents like world-class voices you know I'm, I'm sure we get there and you ask the question, where are they right now? And that's where the problem lies. Because I, I, I saw people that could really, if they had the system or the support or if they pursued it um, to a certain level, it could, it could have been a different story. I'm a lawyer. I also happen to be a mother of six and a music enthusiast. I could be credited as being one of the first women lawyers to have embraced entertainment and media law. Why the less women in the music industry? I can start with my experience. So when I was young, I wanted to dance. I wanted to sing. Uh, my mother would tell me maybe 30 or 40 years later, when one of my artists told her, oh, thanks Cynthia for us, she's helping us and she's doing that. She said, well, she should have been an artist. And when I asked her, but you knew that that's what I wanted to do, why didn't you allow me to do it? She literally summarized it by saying that in those days, it wasn't credible for you to push your child to 
become a band girl or a band boy. So I think the history speaks for itself. Um, in parts of Africa, there's a lot of academic snobbery. And if you're not a doctor, I mean, it's changing now. If you're not a doctor, if you're not a lawyer, if you're not an architect, you're not in certain professions, you're seen as, I use this very loosely, almost a second class citizen. It wasn't encouraged. We don't have so many female musicians out of Ghana, mainly because the whole perception of being an artist, performing, making money from it is a bit um, far, you know? We are still getting there. Being a woman, the whole idea of getting into the music industry sounds a bit absurd to first of your parents. Even for the men, it sounds absurd to them. So imagine as a woman, you decide, oh, I want to be a musician or I want to be a producer. That's like very odd to everyone. So it's been drawn in your head that this is not something for women. So while you're growing up, you're like, ah, maybe you're passionate about it, but you're thought process is quite different. Maybe it should be just a hobby sort of thing. So that's also another. I always had this dream of just being on stage. But again, like the factors that come into play with roles, especially in African society, and you know, things I would look at as a taboo, like music was never really a thought to even mention to my parents. Um, even though my dad is more open to certain things, um, still, like, they always would want you to be safe, be in a safety net. So it's like following the average career, whether it's med medicine or law or something else. And then when I told my, my, my parents that, like, okay, I want to actually pursue music, they thought I was going mad, first of all. <laughs> they thought that I was going, my mom did a whole prayer and everything. I was like, mom, I'm not going mad, I'm okay. Um, but they actually came to take the time to process it and say, okay, she has a background. She wouldn't do this to waste her time. He raised her right. So they took the time to listen to my music, understand my plans, and now like they're my biggest fans and my biggest supporters. From my perspective, two distinct things that challenges that come through. One is a natural biological development, and then the other is actually how the system is stacked against. Which is so a woman has to deal with a lot more than what uh, a guy has to deal with, to be honest. Like at a, at a certain point in time. And this is Africa. A guy can run around till 35 and it's fine. At 25, see, that's a 10 year difference. At 25, you start get, getting those questions. As a woman, I feel like in most traditional homes, traditional settings, which would be majority of Ghana, you are raised to prepare yourself to be taken by a man. Not necessarily to be a career woman or to work on your own, let alone wearing what you want to wear and shaking your body on stage or singing to, you know, entertain people. If anything, if there's anything about singing, even it would be maybe in the choir or in the church and stuff like that. And even after that, the whole aim is to still get a man to marry you and take care of you because there's a lot of poverty and people want less burdens on them. So once you come and take their daughter, that's, you know, less mouths to feed. staff members of, of Black, Black Girls Glow. Glow. Black Girls Glow is an initiative that started in 2017, um, which was set up to foster collaboration among women artists in Ghana. Well, women, we face a multitude of, of challenges in the <laughs> industry here. I, I think one of the first things I'll say is, is having to deal with a, a very male-dominated industry and also the fact that when you want to work with some of these men, there's always this sort of undertones of, of you want to sleep with me. And that can really get in the way, um, especially because we take our art very seriously. And when you're put in situations with es especially producers that you might actually, you know, like and want to work with, and you, you feel that it's, it's a partnership that could actually help both of us. But the reality is that sometimes you sit in these rooms and they are only looking at you for one or two things. We find ourselves in a situation whereby women are 
I will want to I want to be truthful and brutally frank as possible. Women are looked sexually compared to men. When a man puts out a song, it's about the content, the talent. When a woman appears on the scene, is she sexy enough? Is she flirty? Sex appeal, that's what sells a song and not the content and not the composition and not what she's bringing to the table. It's, it's interesting that there's been comments on radio and TV where artist managers have actually blatantly say, um, once I manage a female artist, it's automatically that we're going to have something to win which doesn't make sense to me because and the reason is because we're spending so much time together is we're going to develop some emotional connection but i've seen female artists also manage male artists and they don't have that kind of so i think it's just about self-control also the music industry in itself it's um, it's a, an industry where you need to meet a lot of people where you need to have conversations with a lot of people and most of these actually happen in the evenings even when you want to discover talents you actually need to go out at night to discover speak to and women do not have the luxury of going out every single time or even staying out that late but um it's there's a lot of insecurities where we are from and it's a disadvantage for women so when you want to look at the ratio of men to women when it comes to our music space, mainstream success, and what have you. I will comfortably and confidently say, you're looking at a 90% for men and a 10% when it comes to what the realities are. Take a look at a lineup for a music show. You take, you know, you look at out of 10 artists booked, two, if you're lucky sometimes, female, because you're looking at who's trending, who's got a hot song, who's got a hit song at whatever time. So that's what you'll be looking at basically. And even when it comes to performing at concerts, what time are allotted or women to perform? At what time do they come on board? Are they more like catching raises for the men? Do they have the main sport? When it comes to even payment, how much do we pay women? But interestingly, a lot goes into women preparing for shows than men. Their hair, makeup, dresses, and all that. I feel like we should give women more platforms. We should push women to be on stage. Personally, what I do is, like when I see a flyer, maybe a friend who's an artist, the manager posts the flyer and I see all guys, I say, hey, why? Sausage party. You boy, you just like sausage. Not that I want to come and perform, but I don't see, I know my music is a bit different, but I don't see all the other commercial female artists on the bill. Like, are you not thinking of it? You know, there's this sort of disparity between those that are in the mainstream and those of us that are maybe upcoming uh, or al alternative. Um, yet I feel like we need to all be given the same sort of playing field. It's unfair to sort of, yes, we know that some might have a bigger following, but I think that if you give us the visibility, we'll also get garner that same amount of following as well. It's just about the visibility. Um, and so another thing I would say is with bookers and people that do shows, et cetera, festivals, sometimes you'll see a festival and you'll see maybe like 12 men on the bill and one woman. And so sometimes it's like, okay, well, how about the rest of us here that are also doing, let's say, amazing things as well? What do we have to do to prove? I perform on so many shows, but even if you've seen me perform over and over again, it always feels like the first time, because no matter what it is, if it's a stage of 20,000 people or a crowd of 10 people, I will perform like my life depended on it, because I actually love doing it. I think I'm a very great performer. I think people like to see me perform. I love you. As deep down in my heart, even I'm in some young girls. Me dey make you mine, you know, never my own dear. Show me what's up, you never will ever be. Oh, say I love you. Skip a few pieces, lose it. Are you not the one? Hi guys, it's Effie. So, like, if if you look at 
impact, you know, in front of the stage and impact at the back of the stage. There's, that's, there's also a challenge in there. Like, there's not been a lot of executives, managers, um, producers, programmers that are women. But then you don't have executives at the back that make it possible for some of these things to happen. I mean, globally, it's exciting to see women making decisions that affect other women. So there's an understanding of what the cycles are. You don't have that. But having said that, I mean, the, the CEO of Charter House has been a woman. She's been a, a supporter of music in terms of bookings, in terms of performances, stages, pushing. But I mean, how much can one person, uh, a few people do? Whether there are many women at the time that I entered, you know, there, there definitely were people within the industry uh, in different roles. You know, one person actually that comes to mind is Theresa Yorde of Chatterhouse, who actually, with her husband, created the Ghana Music Awards. They were doing this long before I came along. And I am sure that there were other women in the background who were playing their role within the entertainment and music sector generally. We need to realize that women culturally have been disadvantaged and it's a men's world when we come here. So if we do not come together or we do not say we are making any a deliberate attempt at projecting helping our women to reach the heights of which our men are, naturally is not going to work. Boomplay is a music streaming platform, and that's number one in Africa. We currently have over 100 million downloads. And for Ghana, where I am managing, we have 10 million plus downloads. It's actually come up to uh, prioritize women or content from women. We have some playlist that has like very huge numbers most of the time i'm reminding them you need to put women as the playlist cover as well it's something that we have actually discussed now that we are in 2021 we are developing we're evolving we are learning um, we are understanding feminism and things like that i love to involve women whether creatively or purely musically as well so um in 2020 when i did my EP or first album, it has seven songs. I was always proud to say at interviews that I have five girls. It's just seven songs, but I have five girls on the whole, um, on the album. I was compiling music for my second album, Groovy. And I, at a point in time, I just sat down and I played the catalog and I realized that by virtue of putting the project together, I was working with more women. And now it's turned into a mission where like, we are putting women who have taken time to develop themselves artistically forward and showing the variety that is in the Ghanaian music industry and Africa as a whole too. For me, I've always found it amazing how women are able to connect their life struggles, whether or not you're penning for them, to their music and be able to express and emote it, be it by choice of melodies, words. Like, it's interesting to see women work. I think a lot is going to change moving forward and employers within the music industry and even outside of the music industry need to start looking at their policy change. The ratio is still very small because I think when I started um, performing almost 11 years, the number of women I saw mm. have incrementally changed. Yeah. It's uh, again, if it was nine to one, I would say maybe now it's seven to three. The ratio is still off, but there has been some small increase in the number of women who are visible in the arts. We have young girls that want to learn how to produce now. You know, that wasn't a thing before. 
So if that's occurring now, in the next five years, we're definitely gonna have more young girls who are producers and probably better than the boys, eh? That's the plan. At first, we're, we're hoping the industry will, will change for us, but maybe we have to help the industry change. And so instead of waiting for somebody to sort of create and open the door, we're gonna create, we're gonna build the door and we're gonna open it ourselves and we're gonna let our sisters follow us through because we believe that it's, imp it's important. You know, if, if you're not gonna give us the platform, we will platform ourselves. I personally feel that the best way we can tackle that is if we have a lot more females venture into the music industry to act as mentors to a lot of the young female artists who are coming up because they're different. So I think that the more we encourage and the more we find females who want to do music or media or entertainment or film pushing into the industry, it would definitely help. And also investors, you know, who will help the female artists to, to achieve more.